friends, welcome back to the Moss and Mirth channel. If you're new here, my name's Stephanie and this is Smudge. <laughs> and this is where I share my love of nature, creativity, and self-love. Today I'm really excited and a little nervous <laughs> to be doing something different and outside of my comfort zone. We are going to do a plant tour. And for those of you who don't know, uh, my husband and I actually lived full time in a 1975 Airstream that we restored. It took us about three years to finish the renovation and we just got on the road in July. Are you trying to steal the spotlight? Yeah. Anyways, we're super excited to finally be on the road after working on this trailer for so long. If you're curious to find out more about the Airstream or maybe see a tour of it, I will link that video up below on our other channel. But for now, we are gonna focus on the plants today. If you didn't know, I am a huge lover of plants. Um, I have a lot of house plants and a few outside. Um, they all travel with us. I do have to pretty much pull them all down and put them in crates and boxes when we are on the road. And then I put them back up. <laughs> so it is definitely a labor of love, but I just love the life um, that plants bring into a space and my husband and I both have really really enjoyed having so many plants in here. I'm not for sure how many plants I have. I think it's probably between 50 and 60. So one of the things we're going to do today is actually count up how many plants I have and we'll go ahead and put the total right here on the screen. So stick around if you want to see all those plants and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with a classic, can't go wrong house plant. And if you have been in the house plant world at all, you've probably heard of it and seen it a ton. And that is the golden pothos. This is one of my favorite plants for good reason. It's so easy to take care of. It's a really great trailing plant, super easy, can take a little bit of low light, can be neglected. Like you really can't go wrong with a golden pothos. I have killed one. I really was not great at plants at one point in life. Um, I still don't claim to be a plant expert, so please. <laughs> um, but I have learned a little bit and um, I can tell you that this one, super easy. Okay, next up, right in here under this macrame valance, I have a bunch of different philodendrons, some pothos, a lot of vining plants that kind of sit up on this shelf. We'll get some close-ups of those so you can see um, but I do have quite a few up here. All right, so first up we have my Syndapsis Pictus Exotica. Um, it is a beautiful plant, very easy. One of the things I love about this plant is that it grows huge leaves. So eventually this is gonna be a full long trailing plant just covered in big leaves. Next to it, we have my Marble Pothos. I actually got this from my mother-in-law who got it from a friend. Um, just as some cuttings, but it's doing really good. Next to it, we have my philodendron mycans. Um, normally these grow much larger leaves, but I think that this situation isn't the best light. Um, I do have a grow light, I'll insert a clip so you can see what we're dealing with, but I think this plant would do better in more light, but it is seeming to become a little happier, so I have hope for it. Next to that one, we have a philodendron Brazil. Again, a great, beautiful plant with some variegation if you're into that. This one will eventually vine. Next to that philodendron, we have another Syndaptis, Syndapsis pictus, but this one I believe is the Argerius form. So there are a few different varieties. This one's kind of been through the ringer. You can see he um, he's just not doing great. And I think that he just wasn't getting enough sun where he was before. So I've moved him up here. I think now that he's under the grow light, he's doing a little better. Next to that one, we have a philodendron cordatum or heartleaf philodendron that is growing super long. Really happy about that. And the last plant I have up on this shelf is my some type of philodendron, an upright philodendron, I believe. 
Um, I'm not sure what type it is though. I can't remember and it wasn't marked when I purchased it. Um, they did tell me, but I just don't remember. So if you can help me ID this one, I would love that. Leave a comment down below if you know what type of philodendron this is. And that is all that I have up here on this shelf. Moving on over to my side of the bed, right below this window, I have my nightstand and a couple plants over here. First one I have is my Cebu Blue Pothos. Sharina would be proud. She's the reason I know how to pronounce this plant. As a side note, I may reference a few YouTubers because I watch a lot of plant content online. So Sharina has a channel. I will link it down below. You should definitely check her out, especially if you like Hoyas. Anyway, this Cebu Blue is actually my husband's favorite plant. I asked him why earlier today and he said it's because it looks like a bunch of snake heads popping out. I'm a little concerned about that. That seems kind of weird, but he loves it. This one is his favorite. I purchased mine at Walmart, uh, gosh, probably 10 months ago. Um, so if you're lucky, you might have to run into one at Walmart, but other than that, they can be tricky to find. The next one I have, and also another favorite, is my Hoya Crimson Queen. Um, I always remember that this one is a Crimson Queen because the crown is on the outside. So when I think of crowns, even though I know it has to do with the princess too, I just associate crown to a queen. So I remember that this one has like a gold crown around the outside. This is um, an easy type of Hoya, one of the more common ones. Uh, this is actually a few different Hoyas that I've potted up together. So you'll notice that one of the runners is actually really, really long. It climbs all the way up the wall. That was one single vine that I was able to purchase down in South Texas. And then I added a few other um, clippings from smaller pots that I've accumulated here and there. So I can't wait for the rest of this one to get long and viney like that one strand. So pretty. And then down. Here we have my Moonshine Sansevieria, or now I guess they're called Dracaemas. I've heard that from a few different people, but I think Summer Rain Oaks is the first one. Again, I'll link her down below. Another awesome plant content, content creator, but this is a Moonshine Sansevieria is what I call it. And it has a little baby coming out, so that's super fun. The foliage, um, when it first comes in, it's really light, pale, minty green, and then it kind of fades over time. This is my, probably my favorite type of snake plant. I just love it, and again, snake plants are one of the easiest house plants you can find. Uh, you can neglect them. Don't over love them, but uh, you can neglect them and they'll be just fine. Right here next to our TV and in Hayden's work area, I have a plant stand with lots of plants, lots of little baby plants. Um, this grow light normally stays on, but I'm going to turn it off to help with the video so you can see a little better. There we go. I think that's a little better. So I'll start with what I have hanging in this little macrame which if you didn't know, I sell macrame goods on Etsy. I do macra handmade macrame pieces. So I'll link my shop below if you'd like to go check it out. Anyways, here in this little macrame, I have three Hoyas hanging. The first one we have is the Hoya obovata. It has large, round, really succulent leaves. The next one we have is the Hoya Hindu rope, which is so crinkly and funky looking. I just love this one. I think it's super unique. It's actually the first Hoya I ever bought, so love that one and then last but not least i have a hoya croniana um, eskimo it's not a super eskimo which is the lighter version this is just the eskimo but i think i was pretty lucky to get this it's one of the more harder to find hoyas um, i ordered it online and it's grown a ton it's just doing great and i love it and then over here on Hayden's desk, we have a Peperomia obtusifolia, I believe. And this is the variegated one. And this um, was, again, one of the first plants I ever got. Um, I don't have that same plant anymore, unfortunately, but it lived in my office when I was working in banking. And it thrived for years and years, even without a window, just under fluorescent light, it was happy. And <laughs> it did great for years. And I think ultimately it's, its demise was probably due to um, not being fertilized or repotted in years. <laughs> so that was completely my mistake. I've since learned better. And then the last thing right here I wanted to show you is my little 
propagation box, I guess you could call it. I have some string of hearts cuttings in here and some Peperomia Hope cuttings. Um, I love these little takeout containers. This one I think was especially great to get my hands on because it's got these little ventilation holes and uh, these cuttings just love it. It keeps them nice and moist and humid and they grow like crazy. Okay, so down next to that little plant shelf, I have my braided Pachira aquatica or sometimes called a money tree. If you'd like to see the base of the stem, there's what it looks like with the braids. I think these look so cool as they mature and get really tall with the long braided trunk. They're just really, really neat. And then moving on to the top tier of this plant shelf. Might be a bit tricky to get into here. Let's see. Okay, starting down the top left. Um, this is a little succulent that I have. Um, I'm not sure the variety. It's got like an orangey color to it. Um, super easy one. So I love that one. Then down here. Let's see. Yeah. Then down here next to it, we have my Peperomia piccolo banda, which is a type of like a rippled Peperomia. Um, but the colors are just too cool. <laughs> Something about it reminds me of mint chocolate. I guess it's the green with the chocolatey brown color. Uh, it makes me hungry. Moving on, next to that one we have another Peperomia. This one is Peperomia Hope, which is kind of a longer vining Peperomia, as you can see there. Um, but this one does great. I love to propagate this one. And I think one of the coolest things about these types of stemming Peperomias is when you cut them to propagate them, at least in my experience, the little stem that's left, a plant just kind of let it lets it rot away and then it'll just fall off and a new stem will appear. So pretty cool the way they grow. Next to that Peperomia Hope, I have some Rips Ripsalis Paradoxa. I actually just ordered this online and got the cuttings. I found them really inexpensively on Etsy and I will link the shop down below if you want to go see if they still have some. Um, unfortunately, I potted it up as soon as it came. Um, and it was, it just came as bare rooted kind of cuttings, I guess. And so I potted them up and I think I overwatered it initially because within about a week it was um, rotting. So I saved what I could and now I'm just trying to propagate the leftover stems. But this is a pretty hardy plant from what I've heard and I'm hopeful that it should grow <laughs> and thrive pretty soon. Behind that one, we have my Hoya Curtisii. Uh, this was a cutting I purchased from someone off of Etsy, um, and for the longest time it just really didn't do anything. And then finally one day, early this summer, it started pushing out a little bit of new growth. So um, this is a great vining Hoya, and I've heard that it blooms pretty easily, I believe. So we'll see. Then next to that one I have some type of Aloe Horthia variety. Not sure on the specific one, but it's kind of fuzzy. It's really cool. Um, I think this is one of the more uncommon ones, so I've enjoyed it. I actually just got this one from a nursery in um, around Boulder, and it is doing great. Loving life. And next to that one, we have some um, Peperomia ruby. No, I'm sorry, Peperomia graviolens. This is a more succulent variety of Peperomia. Um, so they like to be kind of root bound and in very, very well draining soil. Um, so keep it in a small pot, give it a ton of sun, make sure that it drains well and it should do well for you. I struggled at first with this one, but I think I finally got the hang of it. And in the back corner, we have some Peperomia Ruby Cascade, a long vining Peperomia, really, really pretty. And this one has some red on the underside of the leaves. So. If you like some variation in color in your plants, this is a good one. And the last one on this shelf is a Pilea peperomioides. I actually have a larger plant of this back home that my uh, mother-in-law is fostering for me. <laughs> Thank you. And this is one of the babies that came off of that one. They produce babies like crazy. I bet this one will be big and a mama soon. All right, here's a little overview of the second shelf. It is kind of dark, but I think this will be the best light for us. So we're going to work with it. <laughs> uh, over here is one of my Maranta plants. I have three, as you can see. Um, but this is, I think, 
a just a green Maranta, I want to say. Um, Marantas are so cool because their leaves just move a ton during the day. Um, and they're commonly referred to as prayer plants because they'll fold up kind of like in a prayer hand position. They're just really, really neat. Um, so clearly I love them since I have three. <laughs> the next one of those is kind of hiding in the back. Um, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. So that one there is my Maranta Lemon Lime. This I think is probably the most common Maranta you can find. Um, so that's the first one I got my hands on. And then next to it, we have a variegated Maranta. Um, I'm worried that this one is losing its variegation. I hope it doesn't, we'll see what happens, but it is just a beautiful one. If you can see some of those leaves, they are just stunning. I love this type of variegation, so pretty. And then pretty much the rest of the plants I have on this shelf are gonna be all succulents. Um, I'll do some close-ups so you can see them, but in the back we have a type of Crassula, I believe. And then down here are some Lithops. Um, this one over here is a type of Echeveria. And then this one is a, um, sorry for losing on my finger. That one I think is called a Jewel Succulent. And then I have a Moonstones, um, a couple of Baby Toes. One of those actually is for my mother-in-law. <laughs> And then these up front here are pretty funky, but this one, um, he's kind of uh, fuzzy. I'd never seen that one before. I just ordered these online from an Etsy shop. I will link below, you betcha. <laughs> um, and then lastly down here, we have some Peperomia um, columella, I believe is what it's called in the very front. I ordered three of this because I had never seen it stocked anywhere before and I'm gonna pot these all up together but these are so cool when they grow larger a lot of people call them um, I want to say dragon tail um, just because of the way they kind of tentacle out they're they're really cool so I can't wait for this one to get big okay so above our little plant shelf and our TV I have a couple hanging plants this one up front is a spider plant. Um, these are really cool. Mine has never produced babies yet, but I know that it will. I'm excited for when it starts to make little babies. And then hiding over here is a little type of holiday cactus that I started from some cuttings. I don't know what type of holiday cacti it is because I know there are Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter um, holiday cacti. So we'll see depending on when it blooms, but um, I haven't had it started very long, probably a year. It hasn't bloomed for me yet, but I'm sure it'll be pretty. And I'll be shocked by the color and the season when it blooms since I don't know what to expect. Moving on to our kitchen. The first one we have in here is a little pot of a couple of different varieties of um, Gasteria. So I think this one is a warded variety in the back. And then the front is just a solid green. Um, I think I started both of these from cuttings and I've had them, well, I've had the warty one for a very, very long time, probably four or five years. Um, and he's never put out a pup for me, but I'm hopefully that he'll make a little baby. This green one in front, um, it's got several little offshoots coming up. So I think that these guys both must be pretty happy, but they can do okay in lower light situations. So that's why I kind of have them tucked right here, a little bit away from the window. Okay, and then moving on down, I have this little tray of three different uh, varieties of Hawarthia. Uh, I think they look so cute all together in these little terracotta pots and this tray, it's just, it's just so cute. Um, but these guys stay pretty compact, which is nice. And they're one of the few succulents that can do well in lower light. In fact, in my experience, these guys will burn like crazy if you put them in direct sun. So. Be mindful of that, but otherwise they're a really easy succulent, especially for growing indoors. Okay, down further in the kitchen. Well, first of all, we have a window, RV park life. I'm just gonna close this, so we're not invading on anybody's privacy over there. Okay, so this is kind of the little plant corner that I've created. I have pretty much all the mine propagations back here and some starter plants, so um, this is definitely 
looking a little bit plant hoarder-ish. I don't love that, <laughs> but a lot of these I don't plan on keeping long-term. So this is just a temporary situation. Over here we have, um, I, I think this is a lifesaver cactus. I'm not sure, it's kind of a mystery one that I took cuttings off of something. Um, so that's just a little cacti. He seems to do pretty good in lower light. So um, if you don't know, I don't keep a lot of my succulents indoors because I find that most of them want a ton of sun, but I do have a few of them inside. And that's one that I think does okay inside. And then next to it, we have this little planter of um, some more holiday cacti that a dear friend of mine gave me cuttings of. Um, I want to say from her mom or maybe even her grandmother's heirloom cacti. So that's pretty cool. And then next to that, we have a Peperomia frost. Um, I really like lighter colored leaves, the more minty colors. So this one, you know, just really caught my eye. I had to, I had to track one of these down. But he is so happy. He blooms all the time. I think he is um, happy because I have him in a pretty small compact pot. There's like, I'd say probably five plants in here. Um, so he's pretty compact, but I find that a lot of plants actually like that. And then over here, we have a ZZ plant. Super easy, probably the most tolerant plant when it comes to light. Like I've heard of them being in cabinets exposed to no light, like in total darkness, and they still have survived. So if you have just horrible light conditions and are looking for a plant, I really think that this should be your, your very first try. And then next to that, in this little macrame hanger, I have a Hoya pubicalix. Um, this is supposed to be a really, really easy variety of Hoya, one that grows super fast. Uh, it's pretty new to me, so we'll see what happens. But he seems happy and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm very happy with him so far. So, and then down here, I'm kind of getting into the cutting area of things. I have some Cebu Blue Pothos that I'm propagating, um, several little cuttings of some new different types of Peperomia, I think, and then um, some Peperomia uh, or Folia cuttings or Obtusifolia. I can never remember guys. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> and then back here we have some uh, Pothos and Miranda cuttings. Okay, here we are at my desk. Again, I closed the blind. RV park life, you know, got to be respectful. So um, I have lots of plants over here at my desk. We'll start over here. This one in this little macrame is a um, Peperomia caparata, I want to say. If I'm not right, well, I'll try to put everything on the screen, um, but it's a darker um, type of uh, ripple peperomia, and he's doing really good right here, getting a little bit of indirect sun, so he's doing good. Back here in the corner, we have my string of hearts. Um, I think this is probably the first plant that I remember just obsessing over and needing to have. So it was, um, I guess probably about 18 months ago when I was looking for this and I was able to get my hands on some cuttings and um, I wasn't really experienced with cuttings at that point. I've, I've learned a little bit since then so I didn't know what to expect but they just took off man and I didn't know what I was doing so I attribute all that success to the plant not to me. He is just a survivor. Um, right here, the, the leaves are looking a little small. I'm sure that's because he's not getting as much light as he wants. Um, I just really love how he looks back in the corner. So I'm trying to find that balance of what I like and what he likes. <laughs> and then right here, this crazy wild vining plant is some type of peperomia. And I cannot for the life of me think of it right now. <laughs> but he just kind of grows how he wants to grow. And... Um, Again, in my experience, this is one that likes to be in a smaller pot. He really likes to be confined. So I think that's what's giving me success with this one. And then hiding back here, I have some tiny little sprigs of Cody Ledon pendens. And this is a type of succulent that has a thinner stem. Um, so I found that he likes a little bit more water than most succulents. If you had a different experience, please let me know. But I had this one outside for a little bit and I just couldn't stay on top of the watering, especially being in this small pot. 
and he started to suffer. And ever since I brought him in and I'm monitoring the water a little more and trying to keep him happy, he's doing better. But this is one that when it grows large, it will flower and it just looks so cool. These little teardrop um, tendrils with the, it's like a pinkish hue on the tip. It's just, it's a stunning plant when it gets big. And then over here we have uh, Ripsalis bacifera. I'm really getting into Ripsalis, so I'm basically any that I find, I have to have it. It's one that just kind of almost looks like grass, just kind of viney, cascading grass. So cool. Um, he's doing good so far. He was one that came with my Ripsalis paradoxa that got the root rot. Um, this one's doing great. So <laughs> I guess the other one was just a fluke. My bad. And then lastly, over here, we have another little succulent, and this one is Calico Hearts. Uh, I think that the variegation on this is just so pretty with the dark, like magenta, chocolatey speckles on the ends of the leaves. Very pretty. And he's an easy one. Does great indoors. I'm sitting on the toilet. Hope you don't mind. We're in our bathroom. We're in the last little area of the trailer. I have just a handful of plants in here. What I have left in here for now and seems to be doing okay is um, this little, I don't know if this is a rat tail cactus. I'm not sure what type of cactus this is. If you know, please leave a comment below. But um, he, I don't know, I just think he's so cool how he's so wiry. I really, I really like the funky look of him. So Dr. Seuss-ish. Can you get me? Can you get me? <laughs> and then next to that one, I bought this thinking that it was a type of Ripsalis. As you know, love Ripsalis. But I think it's actually Hateoria. I can't know. I don't remember how you pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen. But I think that's what it is. If you think otherwise, again, let me know. And then the last two plants I'll show you inside before we go outside and check out what I have in there are my orchids. Orchids are totally new to me. Um, I have just gotten hooked on this Orchid Girls channel. I'll link it below. But if you're getting into orchids, you should definitely check her out. And I'm just learning so much about a completely different world <laughs> of orchids. So their, um, their care is just a little bit different than, than typical plants. Anyways, right here I have a Phalaenopsis orchid. Um, and then this one, mm, oh, I want to say it's a Cattleya orchid. I'll put the names of both below. Um, this one has bloomed for me. I, my mom actually purchased it for me when it was in bloom and it was like a colorful, vibrant pinkish purple flower. And then, um, this one's never bloomed. I actually bought it on clearance for really inexpensive and, um, he was a tiny little thing. He's grown a lot. So I'm hoping that soon it will bloom for me. Oh, and I keep them in this little Tupperware because when I water them, I like to let them sit and kind of do some bottom, bottom watering for a while um, so that this orchid bark mixture really absorbs all that water. Oh, I almost forgot about this little guy. This is the only air plant I currently have. I struggle with air plants and I want so bad to be good at them. Any air plant tips you have, I would love them down below because I want more and I have more of these urchin shells. I just think that that is the coolest way to display them. I mean, there's lots of cool ways, but this is definitely, definitely one of the cooler ways. If you're curious to see an overview of the uh, main living space, here you go. So right here, we have Hayden's work area and our TV doubles as his work computer. And then back here we have my desk. Here we have his and hers closets. And then we have our very long spacious kitchen over here. And then here is the view of the front of the trailer with our bed. And then again, Hayden's desk and then our front door. And then there's a smudgy. Hi smudgy. Okay, last but not least, let's go see what's outside. Okay, so now we are outside the trailer and I have a couple big box planters that travel with us and stay outside. Um, this one over here has my cactus collection. It's got lots of different cactus and snake plants in there. 
And then over here I have all my succulents. We have some jade and then mother of millions and then some Hawaiian portulaca. Lots of, lots of stuff in there. I also currently have five plants that are in terracotta that we have arranged on our picnic table. And these kind of float from inside and outside, depending on where we are, honestly. The first one is my Hoya carii. And this Hoya has heart-shaped leaves. Um, it's just so cute. I can't get over it. They're very succulent and thick. Um, this is one that will vine and tendril out like crazy. Um, so I don't have a ton of leaves yet, but he is doing great. Propagates easy. He is just loving life. Next, we have my string of dolphins, which I just recently found at a Walmart in Colorado. Um, this is, if you don't know, a, um, I think some type of hybrid or cultivar based on string of, uh, string of hooks or string of bananas. But if you look up real close, you can see that the leaves, when they first come out, look like little dolphins just jumping out of the water. It is a really cool plant. It's very unique. Next, I have my string of pearls. And this is one that I struggled with for a long time. I think I've killed at least two of them. Um, and what I have learned is that, number one, they love shallow terracotta pots. And number two is they don't like their roots to be disturbed and you really don't want to upsize their pot too much when you repot. So there's a couple random tips for you, but um, string of pearls is just such a delicate, beautiful, beautiful plant. Next we have my rickrack cactus and how cool is this like fish bony type of texture. This is another type of jungle cactus. I believe it's an epiphyte, meaning that it will grow on trees and other plants. Um, so he likes a really barky, well-drained mixture, um, but I just got him, so I'm still learning. I think that this is just the coolest type of leaf structure though. Very cool. Moving on, I have my Victoria aloe. This um, may be the only aloe I have. Well, I take that back, I may have one other one. But this is one that I was really on the hunt for because of the striking white variegation on here. It, I think it's just such a cool, um, kind of a standout plant. And it's an agave, so it likes to stay dry, likes a lot of sun. It's doing good so far. And the very last plant I have to show you guys today is my variegated Hoya carnosa, um, or I think this is sometimes called Hoya Crimson Princess, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me in the comments, please, if you know otherwise. Uh, but this is a Hoya that just kind of took off for me. It's quite a grower. Um, it's one that will revert. So I do have a few vines that are purely green with none of this yellowish variegation, but that's okay because I think the way it grows is super cool. Um, I'm hoping this will be my first Hoya to ever bloom for me. We'll see if it blooms next summer because um, now it's a little bit more mature. I think I've had it for probably two or three years. So we'll see what happens. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little Airstream houseplant tour. Now that we know how many houseplants I have, what do you think? Is it too many? It's probably too many, but am I gonna stop? I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If this is uh, the type of content you're into, if you're into macrame tutorials and other stuff like that, if you're not subscribed, I hope you will go ahead and subscribe below. Be sure to go check out our website and our Instagram for um, additional inspirational content, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! I'm nervous. We're in the last room in the house. House. <laughs> it's 200 square feet. I also currently have five. My, my, my.